Hey everybody. Just got done doing a water change here on Butterbean's tank, so I thought we could watch him eat his dinner of snails while I talk about plants in a brackish tank. I was looking at my Anubia, I'm sorry, my uh, Java fern that I've got growing in this tank. I just threw in some water sprite that you can see floating up in the corners. We're going to see how well that does in brackish water. Uh, in fact, I have been lowering my salinity with each water change, and that's what's gotten me thinking about this. I tested my salinity tonight with my refractometer, and I am actually below what would officially be considered brackish water right now. But up until very recently, I did have all of that java fern in there growing in brackish water. Uh, traditionally, I keep this tank set at a specific gravity of 1.008 or thereabouts. But you'll notice that the java fern looks very odd and stunted and it's growing in these weird sort of clusters and clumps rather than branching out into long fronds. The rhizomes don't grow very well. So it's by no means thriving in the brackish, you know, the firmly brackish water. And now that I've gotten the specific gravity lowered, I guess maybe six weeks ago or thereabouts, I lowered it down to probably about 1.004, the very low end of brackish, and I began noticing uh, an improvement in the growth. We see a lot more green in there than we did before. So now that I've got the specific gravity officially below what would be considered brackish, I'm interested to see how much more vigorously the java fern in there grows. So I got to thinking about why don't plants grow in brackish water? and Why don't plants grow in hard water? I know not a lot of people out there have brackish tanks, but a lot of people do have hard water uh, either at their tap or they make their water hard because they've got African cichlids or fish like that. And it's always a struggle to get plants to grow in hard water. And brackish water, while technically may not be considered hard water, it does have an awful lot of dissolved solids in it. And that's a significant factor in why I believe plants do not grow well in, we'll just say hard water or anything hard or above, you know, with, with dissolved solids. So I think there's two things going on. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about either of this. This is all speculation based on my own experience with growing plants over the years, mostly terrestrial plants, but I do have a fair bit of experience with growing plants. And I think two things are going on here. I think one has to do with osmosis and osmoregulation. I'm not exactly sure how this would work in plants, but in a simple osmosis system, if you have a semi-permeable membrane, let's say the cellular wall in the root of a plant, if you've got water on both sides of that cell wall and the density or the specific gravity, the salinity if you will, of the water is the same on both sides of that membrane, then you've got stasis and the water will stay where it is. If one side of that membrane has saltier water or that has more dissolved solids in it, the water from the other side, the we'll call it the fresher water with less dissolved solids in it, that water is going to want to move through that membrane and dilute the water that's on the other side so that they're evenly salty. They're always going to try to achieve that stasis where there's the same level of salinity on both sides of that membrane. So with a plant, under normal circumstances, the plant has enough minerals and dissolved solids in it, and this works the same way with fish, you know, freshwater fish versus saltwater fish. The amount of minerals and dissolved solids that are in the water in a plant actually allow for more fresh water to be drawn into the roots. Now I'm sure the plants themselves have some sort of osmoregulation where they're able to pump water in and pump water out if they need to and so on and so forth. This isn't just a simple osmoregulation uh, or an osmosis scenario, but I do believe that once you start getting above a certain level of dissolved solids, a certain level of salinity in the water, the plants can no longer pull water in. It's too salty outside of the plant in order for them to draw water into the much fresher water that's on the inside of the plant. So that is pure speculation on my point. Where I'm a little more uh, firmer ground, a little more firmer footing, is with pH and nutrient balance with the plants. 
So I will also say uh, real quickly while I'm thinking about it, if you've noticed all the bumblebee gobies swimming around in the tank, if you're a regular viewer of mine, uh, I just made a trip to House of Tropicals yesterday, and five very large bumblebee gobies came home with me. So in addition to the tiny little bumblebee gobies that I already had in there, and there should have been up to three of the original tiny ones, I now have five more of these fairly significant sized bumblebee gobies. So that's what that's all about if you're wondering. So the second thing I think is going on with our plants in hard water and what makes it difficult for them to grow is pH and nutrient availability. Not necessarily the nutrients that are in the water, but the nutrients that are available to the plant. Now the reason I say that is because most plants have a sweet spot where they like their pH to be. Now if we're going to talk about terrestrial plants, uh, or even if you're growing plants in a hydroponic setup, you have to have your pH at the proper level for whatever type of plants you're growing. And the vast majority of plants like somewhere in the neutral area. Most plants will like a little bit more acidic than that. 6.5 to 7 is where most plants like their pH. Um, some are notoriously acid loving like rhododendrons and azaleas they like very acidic soil and then some I can't think of any off the top of my head but some like or prefer um, a higher pH than that but when we get into hard water by the time you get to water that we're going to start thinking of as being hard water you're usually associating that with probably about a 7.8 pH and that's just the way that works calcium and magnesium are what make water hard and as you add calcium and magnesium to the water your the pH is going up so by the time you get to hard water it's almost impossible to have hard water with a low pH so they just sort of go hand in hand and what happens is is these minerals are only soluble at a certain acidity so just pick a, a nutrient that you're fond of zinc potassium phosphorus boron anything that plants need there's a window of solubility for that let's just say boron i'm going to pull some numbers out of the air don't quote me on these i'm making them up as i go along but you'll get the point boron might become soluble it at say like as the as the, the water becomes more and more acid let's just say uh, you know nutrient X will become soluble soluble at 7.3 pH and then as the water gets more and more acidic at let's say 5.9 pH it falls out of solubility again so if it's above that pH or if it's below that other pH you no know, outside that window it's not soluble and therefore it's not available to the plant and the vast majority of micronutrients that most plants use fall within that 6.5 to 7.5 solubility window now not all of them are the same the upper end and lower end on all different nutrients is all different stuff but there's sort of this overlapping area where again that six and a half to seven and a half pH is where most of these minerals are soluble and the plants can easily and readily take them up. If they're in the water but the pH is wrong, it doesn't matter. The plants can't get to them, so it doesn't matter how much nutrients you're putting in the water. It doesn't matter how many, you know, foods and ferrets and tabs and all that you're putting in the water. If the pH isn't right, then none of that food is soluble and none of it is available to the plant. So the plant's still going to suffer all of its micronutrient deficiency simply because of the pH being off. And that often has to do with water being very hard. So that, that is my two speculations as to why plants do not grow well in hard water or brackish water. One is the osmosis and osmoregulation. I believe the higher salinity of the water makes it difficult for the plants to draw the water in. And of course, coupled with that is the fact that hard water or brackish water is generally 7.8 or 8 or higher in pH, and a large majority of the nutrients that these plants need fall out of solubility by the time you get to a pH of 8, and the water is simply untenable for plants to live in. So that's my two cents. Hope you enjoyed. I would love to hear your thoughts on the topic. I do sell aquarium plants as well as some yard plants around the house, so if you're interested in any of that, check my email down below. Uh, I'm not going to get into details now, but if you hit me up, we can talk on the email. You'll get a lot of plants for your money. I will guarantee you that. 
So again, check down below. You'll see my email. And I hope uh, this helped. I hope we get a good conversation going about this because, again, I would love to hear your thoughts on it as well. Remember, this is all sort of just speculation on my part based on my own experiences. None, not, none of this is based on research other than my own personal uh, experiences over the years. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Don't forget this one here is my brackish tank. Thanks again. I'll see you, we'll see you in the next one.